Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to how to build a website in Elementor. In the last lesson, we learned about responsive editing in Elementor, optimized the homepage for devices, and designated the homepage in WordPress. In this lesson, we'll create the Our Menu page, learn new widgets, and go over some new techniques to help you become a pro in no time. If you haven't seen the previous lessons in this course, I highly recommend watching them, as we'll be building off what we learned previously. Okay, let's get started. We'll begin with the Hero section, which as you can see from our design, includes two headings, a spacer widget, and a text editor widget. Wait a minute, haven't we designed a section similar to this before? We sure have. The last section of the home page has the same widgets as this one. When you have sections that are very similar on your website, there's no need to start designing again from scratch. I'll share a few workflow methods that will help you save time while building websites in Elementor. Okay, so in order to reuse the section I mentioned, we'll need to reopen the home page. You can hit the escape button on your keyboard and click here to exit to the dashboard. Another way to quickly exit the editor is to type Command or Control E, which opens the Finder. The Finder helps you find your content easily and navigate through WordPress in no time. Just type the word Home and the home page will display. Then hold down the Command or Control key and click the link to open it in a new tab. In the previous lesson, we copied elements and pasted them in different sections throughout the page. Now we'll use the same method to copy from this page and paste into the Our Menu page. Open the navigator, right-click the Our Story section, and click Copy. Now go back to the Our Menu page, right-click, paste, or use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control V. Works like a charm! Okay, so now let's customize it. Click the subheading and update the text. In Style, change the color to Basil. Now select the second header. Add your text. And in Style, change the color. Next, type in your text. In Style, change the color to Basil. Select the spacer. And in the Advanced tab, select a new background image. Right-click the social icons and delete them, as we don't need them for this page. From Widgets, drag and drop the icon widget under the text editor. You can upload your own icon, or as in our case, select one from the icon library. Type Chevron in the search. Select one of the available chevrons and insert it. In Style, change the color. Change the size to 20. Now select the section, and in Advanced, add a margin of 5%. Great! The Hero section is ready. This section, including its widgets and style, will be used over again across the rest of our site. So let's make good use of it. Another way to reuse a section is to save it as a template. To do this, right-click the section and select Save as Template. Give it a memorable name and click Save. To access your templates in the future, you'll find them by clicking the gray folder icon here. This opens the Templates Library, and in My Templates, you'll find all of your own saved templates. Then just hover over the template and click Insert to add it to your page. As you've seen, copying elements and saving them as templates saves valuable time, and I encourage you to incorporate these processes into your workflow. Let's continue to the next section. Create a new section with one column. As we did before, we'll give a name to the sections so we can navigate quickly throughout the page. Open the navigator, name the hero section, as well as the Starters section. Now close the Navigator 
and from the Widgets menu, search for the Divider widget and drag it into the section. The Divider widget creates an organized and aesthetic separation between sections with a customizable line that you can combine with an icon or even text. To add text to the divider, click here and type your text. We can't see it at the moment because its default color is the same color as the background. Let's take care of that so we can see what we're working with. Go to the Style tab and change the divider's color. In Text, select Basil for the font color and set the Typography Global Style to Section. Great! From the Widget menu, drag and drop an intersection below the divider. Right-click here and select Add New Column. We'll continue by creating the first item of our menu offering. As we did in the previous lesson, begin by adding and styling the widgets for the first column one by one. From the Widget menu, drag the Image widget and drop it into the first column. Choose an image and in Style, adjust the width. Back in the Widget menu, drag a heading widget under the image. Type your text and change the HTML tag to H3. Now align it to the center. In Style, change the color to Basil and set the typography to the global style Menu Titles. From Widgets, drag in a text editor widget and type your text. Now right-click on the heading and select Duplicate. Drag it below the other widgets and change the text. Set its HTML tag to H4. And in Style, Typography, select the Hmm. Nothing here quite works. So let's set one more global font style for the price text. Select the pencil icon to set a custom font style and change the font size. Set its weight to 600. And in transform, remove the uppercase by setting it back to default. Now click the plus icon, type a name, and save it as a global font. Perfect. Select the column and in the Advanced tab, change the unit to percent, unlink the values, and add some padding to give more space to the widgets. Great! Now that we understand how easy it is to create each section with different widgets, let's talk about more optimal ways to build in Elementor. As you familiarize yourself with the Elementor editor, and gain more experience, you'll find yourself coming up with ways to simplify and optimize your website building process. For example, widgets like the icon box, as well as the image box, include an image, a title, and a description, all in one place. Using them in the right way will reduce the amount of widgets and can even be used to create entire sections from them. Designing this way not only boosts the performance, but also reduces the loading time of your page. Win-win! To see how this works, let's recreate this menu item in a more optimal way. Drag the image box widget to the top of the column. Add an image, then type the title, and finally, the text. In style, there are loads of options to design and position each of the elements. Take some time and go ahead and experiment with all the options. Let's change the image width a bit. And under Content, set the title's color to Basil. For the typography, choose the global style Menu Titles. Right-click and delete the previous image, title, and description and leave only the price. Fantastic! We've achieved the same design with fewer widgets. Now we'll continue by duplicating the column twice and deleting the extra columns. Click on the image box, replace the title and text. Click on the price and change its content as well. Great! 
Repeat this one last time for the third section. And we're done. Sometimes the amount of text present in a widget can lead to varying section heights, creating an imbalance between the position of your widgets, just like this price here. It's not wrong to leave it as is, but if you'd like all the prices to be at the exact same position, there's a simple fix for that. Select the intersection, and under Vertical Positioning, you'll find different options that enable you to control the widget's position inside sections. Select Space Between, which just as the name suggests, creates space between elements, positioning the first one at the top of the column and the last one at the bottom. Looking at the prices now, they're all at the same height. This is a super simple but often overlooked way to be pixel perfect. Back in Widgets, drag in a spacer widget, set its height to 300 pixels, and in the Advanced tab, uncheck the values and add some margin. Next, expand the Background tab and choose an image. Set the attachment to Fixed and the background to cover, so the image nicely covers the spacer. Great! Now remember that chevron icon we created in our hero section? Let's create an anchor link to connect the icon to this section, so when someone clicks it, it will scroll straight to the starters. Select the section, and in the Advanced tab, enter the ID name, Start. Now scroll up to find the button, and click on it. Under Link, type the pound symbol, or hashtag, and the ID of the section. Again, be sure to type it exactly the same as the ID name. Let's test it. And voila! Let's continue with the mains. Right-click the section, and duplicate. With the second section selected, head over to the Advanced tab. You'll notice that the CSS ID is empty. As I mentioned earlier, CSS IDs should appear only once on your page, so duplicated elements do not copy the ID name over. ID names must be unique, so remember to use different names when creating more than one anchor link. Now open the navigator and change the section's name to Mains. Great! Select the divider and change its text. In Style, set the divider's global color to Grape, as well as the text's color. Select the image box and choose an image for the mains. Change the title and the description. Then go to the Style tab and under Content, select the global color Grape for both the title and description. Now select the heading, change the price, and in Style, set the color to Grape as well. We'll repeat these steps for the next item, and the following one as well. Now select the spacer, and in the Advanced tab, choose a suitable image for the mains. Almost there, just one section to go. Right-click the section and duplicate it. Time for dessert. Open the navigator and name the section Desserts. Now select the divider and update the text. In Style, set both the divider and text global colors to Raspberry. Select the image box and choose an image for the desserts. Change the title and the description. Then go to the Style tab and under Content, set the global color to Raspberry for both the title and description. Select the heading, change the price, and in Style, select the Raspberry color as well. Repeat these steps for the next column and the following one. All that's left now is to change the spacer image. Select it 
and in the Advanced tab, under Background, use an image of your choice. Great! Let's take a look at the page. Looks good enough to eat. So we're done, right? Well, not quite. The page does look fantastic on desktop, but it's really important to preview each page in responsive mode to make sure each page displays correctly in all viewports. Use the keyboard shortcut Command-Shift-M to go directly to tablet view in responsive mode. It looks pretty good, but personally, I'd prefer to reduce the amount of space between columns. Click the first one, and in the Advanced tab, set the padding to 10%. We'll use the hotkeys we learned earlier to copy and paste this style quickly to the other columns. Type Command or Control C to copy the style. Select the next one and hold down Control or Command Shift V to paste the style. Repeat these steps for the other columns as well. Easy as, well, pie! Now let's see how the page looks on mobile. The page looks perfect on mobile. Just in time, because designing this mouthwatering page has left me hungry. Click Update and preview the page. Looks great, if I say so myself. OK, we've now completed the Our Menu page, learned about new widgets, and added more techniques to our repertoire. In the next lesson, we'll create the Contact Us page, which is the last page of our website. We'll delve into the Advanced tab to learn more about optimization and best practices when building websites. So go have some dessert, and after, click to watch and complete building your website. <laughs>